After a record-setting December heat wave made Americans wonder what happened to winter, a huge storm is now bringing freezing temperatures from Canada, and the cold air is being carried on very fast winds. Here are the details. The Washington Post reports that a sudden movement of air on Monday, December 6, finally started bringing freezing temperatures from Alaska and Canada to the lower 48 states of the U.S. Before this sudden sea change, the lower 48 states have been experiencing record-breaking heat for November and December, while the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia had also been experiencing record-breaking autumn rainfall on top of unseasonably high temperatures. Meteorologists said the strange warm weather in the U.S. had been caused by a stuck polar vortex. This channel of air flows at a very high speed at the height of 30,000 feet on the boundary between the cold Arctic air and the warmer air south of the Arctic. The polar vortex steers storms and usually changes its shape and position, but scientists say it's been stuck in one place for an unusually long time. And that's why the U.S. had been having such strangely warm weather over November and the beginning of December. Meanwhile, Hawaii has been hit by snow-dumping blizzards on its highest peaks, while flooding and high winds are punishing the archipelago's low-lying areas. Scientists found that Earth's northernmost jet stream is in trouble. They say that if this weather-controlling air current migrates northward, the U.S. and Europe are in for centuries of nasty weather. Here are the details. In a new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, Scientists warn that the planet's northernmost wind channel, called the North Atlantic Jet Stream, will start migrating northward if the Earth keeps warming up. This would impact North America and Europe in the form of more severe flooding, droughts, and heat waves. The jet stream is a band of fast-moving air that is created by the difference in pressure between cold Arctic air and warmer air to the south. It is also known for giving airliner jets a time-saving boost when they travel from the U.S. to Europe. The study's researchers bored deep holes in the Greenland ice sheet and looked at the way snow layers had been deposited over the last 1,250 years. From this, they calculated the past positions and intensity of the powerful air current. They say that while the current fluctuations in the jet stream's position and intensity are still within historic bounds, their calculations indicate that the weather-controlling air current would migrate northward by 2060 if greenhouse emissions continue at the current pace. The study found that in 1374, the jet stream moved northward and caused a drought and famine in Spain and Portugal. When the jet stream's wind intensity decreased by 50% in 1728 and 1740, it led to cooler temperatures and less rain, causing famines in Ireland and Britain. A team of scientists who study the world's ocean currents say the increased melting of Arctic freshwater is causing an imbalance in the salinity of seawater in the North Atlantic. They say this could lead to a very sudden shutdown of the current that carries warm water to the planet's northern reaches, causing a sudden and dramatic drop in temperatures in North America and Europe, as well as disastrous food shortages worldwide. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that climate scientists have detected warning signs of the collapse of the Gulf Stream, one of the planet's main potential tipping points. The research found an almost complete loss of stability over the last century of the currents that researchers call the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. The currents are already at their slowest point in at least 1,600 years, but the new analysis shows they may be nearing a shutdown. Such an event would have catastrophic consequences around the world, severely disrupting the rains that billions of people depend on for food in India, South America, and West Africa. While increasing storms and lowering temperatures in Europe, the AMOC is driven by dense, salty seawater sinking into the Arctic Ocean, but the melting of fresh water from Greenland's ice sheet is slowing the process down earlier than climate models suggested. The analysis was based on fingerprints the AMOC leaves in surface temperature and salinity patterns. It showed a critical threshold is being reached beyond which the system may collapse. While the scientists are sounding the alarm, others sound less certain. David Thornally of University College London, whose work showed the AMOC is at its weakest point in 1,600 years, said, The signs of decreasing stability are concerning, but we still don't know if a collapse will occur or how close we might be to it. The recent heat wave in the states of Oregon and Washington caused a lot of damage to roadways. In one post on Twitter, a user based in Portland shared photos of a nearby road and said their house began to shake as the road's concrete started to split. The user wrote, The house started to shake and we thought it was an earthquake. But no, the road was so hot it literally buckled. Here's how it happened. 
Newsweek reports that roads are buckling and breaking apart from the unprecedented hot weather that's been hitting the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. In the usually cool Portland, temperatures soar to 47 degrees Celsius on Monday, June 28th. Scientists say the problem is that Oregon's roadways were not designed to survive such heat. These roadways are made of concrete slabs that contract in cold weather and expand in hot weather. The slabs were shaped with gaps between them, and these gaps are there to create room for the concrete when it expands. However, these gaps are only big enough to make room for the kind of expansion that happens during normal temperature highs, and the recent heat wave created temperatures so high that the concrete slabs expanded so much that they pushed against each other, causing the slabs to break and buckle. Roads that were made of asphalt, on the other hand, often became so hot that they became soft like toffee, and thus became deformed by large numbers of heavy vehicles driving over them. Meanwhile, workers ventured out last week in the blistering heat to put cracked concrete and asphalt roadways back together. Steel drawbridges were doused with water to make sure they wouldn't swell shut under the oppressive heat. North of the border, a weather station in Lytton, British Columbia, notched the highest temperature in Canada's recorded history, a mind-melting 121 degrees Fahrenheit, or 49.6 degrees Celsius. Soon after that, the town was destroyed by a wildfire. The severe drought in the western part of the U.S. is about to get even worse. Here are the details. CNN reports that scientists say the climate crisis is behind the increase in droughts globally, and this increase is currently hitting the U.S. in the form of the historic multi-year drought that is parching the eastern U.S. More than 90% of this region has been in drought since June, and the Colorado rivers Lake Mead and Lake Powell are draining at alarming rates. The unrelenting drought there is about to get worse with La Nina on the horizon, according to David DeWitt, director at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Climate Prediction Center. As we move into fall from October on, the southwest U.S. is going to see persistent intensification and development of drought, DeWitt told CNN. La Nina is marked by cooler sea surface temperatures across the central and eastern Pacific, near the equator, which causes global weather changes. In the southwest U.S., it typically causes the jet stream, a high-altitude wind stream that carries storms around the globe, to shift northward. This will have the effect of even less rain falling in the parched southwest. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's latest projections show a 70% to 80% chance of La Nina emerging during the Northern Hemisphere's winter season. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.